Hi guys, in this video we are going to introduce the topic of chemical reaction equations. All right, so let's start things off with a definition that you may recall from earlier in the class. So the definition of a chemical reaction is any process in which one or more substances, and we're going to call these substances reactants, are converted or changed into one or more different substances. And we're going to call these substances that the reactants are changed into products. Right? So we have a change, a chemical transformation changing reactants into products. So for example, if we are forming water, right? You can turns out you can form water H2O by reacting hydrogen H2 and oxygen O2, right? So we've defined here in this example a simple chemical reaction. Now it turns out that uh, it's convenient to represent these chemical reactions using a symbolic form. And we call the symbolic representation of a chemical reaction a chemical reaction equation. And so the idea behind a chemical reaction equation is we simply use the molecular formula uh, in order to provide a shorthand representation for both the reactants and products. And then we're going to introduce some symbolism that allows us to understand what species, what compounds, what molecules are undergoing reaction, and what the resulting products are going to be. And so here's an example looking again at the formation of water. So what we end up doing is we write out the molecular formula for each one of the reactants, and we separate those molecular formulas for each one of the reactants using a plus sign here. And we basically read this by saying H2 plus O2, and then we introduce a chemical reaction arrow, right, that denotes, hey, there's some sort of chemical change occurring here. And so we read that as changed into, and then we write the chemical formula of our product. So we have H2 and O2 react and are changed into H2O. So here's a little summary of uh, everything I just said here. So basically, if, I, if you see any given chemical reaction equation, everything that shows up on the left-hand side here of that chemical reaction arrow is a product. And everything that shows up here on the right-hand side of that chemical reaction equation is a product. So we have reactants on the left and products on the right. And then we're using plus signs to distinguish each and every one of those reactants or products if there are more than one on a given side of the equation. And then the reactants and products themselves are separated from one another using this so-called reaction arrow. And there is another part of this chemical reaction equation that I didn't mention in the previous slide. Notice that in parentheses following each and every one of those compounds listed, there is a, you know, a G in parentheses. Okay? So what that is, um, is a little representation that denotes that each one of these compounds in this particular chemical reaction are in the gas phase. Right? And it turns out that, you know, for depending on the chemical reaction that we happen to be studying, these reactants or products could be in any one of four possible stages. If they are in a liquid state, we use a little parentheses L to denote that. If they're in the solid form, we use a parentheses S. And if that compound is dissolved in water, we use a little AQ, which stands for aqueous. Okay, so we can really think of these chemical reaction equations like we saw on the previous slide, as a recipe, right? It's basically a recipe telling us to combine hydrogen with oxygen and get water vapor, right? However, um, equation one here isn't a complete recipe because it's not specifying the amount correctly of each one of these reactants or products that are gonna be formed. So to provide accurate quantitative description of the reaction, we need to introduce one more concept, and that's the concept of so-called stoichiometric coefficients. Okay? So the definition of stoichiometric coefficients are simply coefficients placed in front of the chemical formula for each one of those reactants and products, and they're going to indicate the relative numbers of reactants and product molecules involved in that chemical reaction. So if there's only one 
of those uh, you know, given reactants or products present in that chemical reaction equation, then we don't actually write out the one. So there's always an assumed one if you don't see a number, all right? And by convention, we always use the smallest whole number coefficients in order to write out um, a complete chemical reaction equation. So if we do that for our example here of the formation of water, what it turns out we end up needing to do is introduce stoichiometric coefficients before the H2 and the H2O. And the reason we introduce these stoichiometric coefficients comes down to a principle that uh, basically says, as we talked about earlier in the course, that you can never create or destroy matter. Therefore, we must always have the same number of each type of atom on each side of that chemical reaction equation. Now, as a little note for uh, future uh, topics to be covered, there is a branch of chemistry and physics known as nuclear chemistry or nuclear physics where you can actually change different atom types. But for the purposes of our work right here, we must always have chemical reaction equations that have the same number of atoms on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And so we have a special name for that. If you have a chemical reaction equation and you have equal numbers of each atom type on the reactants and product side, you have what we call a balanced chemical reaction equation. And so what we're gonna do in the remainder of this video is introduce uh, essentially two different methods that are commonly used for balancing chemical reaction equations. The first one we're gonna introduce is the whack-a-mole method, and the second is the so-called algebraic method. Now, I will tell you right now, you only need to use one of these, right? This, this is redundant information um, you know, to tackle both of them, um, but I encourage you guys to watch the video for both and basically you know, make the choice yourself which one you like to use the most, and you know, basically go from there, okay? So to see how we apply these balancing chemical reaction methods, we're gonna go back to our favorite example here, the formation of water. And notice that in this balanced chemical reaction equation, we put that stoichiometric coefficient of two in front of both the H2 and the H2O molecules. And when I put that stoichiometric coefficient of two, remember what that is saying is that we have two of these H2 molecules. Right, so here's the first one, here's the second one. In this case, we have two of these H2O molecules. Here's the first one, and then here's that second one. So then if we go through and we count up how many of each one of those atom types are present, we see on the left-hand side, we have one, two, three, four, a total of four hydrogen atoms present, one, two, two oxygen atoms, and then come over here to the water, we have once again two oxygen atoms and one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms. So notice that these numbers are in fact matching up. The right hand side and the left hand side are equivalent in terms of number of atoms. All right, so the next video, we are gonna focus in detail on first that whack-a-mole method. And then optionally, if you wanna watch on the additional video, we'll touch upon the algebraic method.